What is the best way to go about being a person? What are the rules of this game and how might we best play it? This is the central question that Alaska Young and Miles Halter struggle with throughout the novel Looking for Alaska. What is the answer to this question? What do Alaska and Miles conclude? To answer these questions, let's first explore the meaning of the labyrinth in Looking for Alaska. What is the labyrinth and how does it relate to the central question? Literally, a labyrinth is a maze or a complex system of paths or tunnels in which it is easy to get lost. But the labyrinth has a deeper meaning in the book. The first time we read about the labyrinth is when Alaska is quoting for Miles her favorite last word said by Simon Bolivar. He was shaken by the overwhelming revelation that the headlong race between his misfortunes and his dreams was at that moment reaching the finish line. Damn it, he sighed. How will I ever get out of this labyrinth? How does this quote explain what the labyrinth is? That's the mystery, isn't it? Is he trying to escape? The world or the end of it. Even though Alaska challenges Miles to figure out what the labyrinth is, she eventually gives him the answer. It's not life or death, the labyrinth. It's suffering, doing wrong and having wrong things happen to you. That's the problem. Bolivar was talking about pain. In looking for Alaska, the labyrinth has a double meaning. The labyrinth refers to pain and suffering, and Alaska herself is a metaphor for the labyrinth. I realize the importance of curves of the thousand places where bodies ease from one place to another, from arc of the foot to ankle to calf, from calf to hip to waist. I'd noticed curves before, of course, but I had never quite apprehended their significance. The different curves of Alaska's body are like the different curves or angles you experience when walking through a labyrinth or maze. She is mysterious and puzzling, an enigma. It is through exploring the labyrinth of Alaska that Miles eventually figures out how to escape the labyrinth of suffering and pain. How do Miles and Alaska escape the labyrinth of suffering? Alaska watches her mother die and is frozen into paralysis from calling 911 to save her. Alaska blames herself, as does her father, for her mother's death. This is the main incident that causes Alaska's subsequent suffering and pain. Her pain further snowballs when she forgets the anniversary of her mother's death and she feels she has failed her mother again. The meaning of Alaska's name also provides a clue for how she deals with pain and suffering. Her name means that which the sea breaks against as Alaska is constantly fighting the storms, issues, troubles and misfortunes in her life. Alaska's love for Moby Dick is also a similar metaphor. The whale in Moby Dick represents elements of life out of human control and unbridled nature. Similar to Alaska, who is carefree and unbridled, and experiences pain and loss that is out of her control. However, the sea swallows up the whale as Alaska herself seems to be struggling against, and is swallowed up by her pain and suffering leading to her eventual death. Even Miles recognized that Alaska's absorption into her pain and suffering, and the failure to forgive herself for her mother's death, caused her to self-destruct. Miles recognized this. When she messed up all those years ago, just a little girl terrified into paralysis, she collapsed into the enigma of herself. Forgetting her mother, failing her mother and her friends and herself, those are awful things, but she did not need to fold into herself and self-destruct. So how did Alaska choose to escape the labyrinth of suffering? Alaska herself said, getting out isn't easy. Eventually she got tired of going through the maze and never knowing when and if her suffering and pain would end and she got tired of imagining a future free of suffering. Consequently, Alaska chose the straight and fast way out, skipping the labyrinth altogether and the pain and suffering that comes with it. However, Miles chooses a better way out of the labyrinth. At some point in life, everyone gets dragged out to sea by the undertow. We are all going. An important parable in the book. Banzan was walking through the market one day when he overheard someone ask a butcher for his best piece of meat. The butcher answered, Everything in my shop is the best. You cannot find a piece of meat that is not the best. Upon hearing this, Banzan realized that there is no best and no worst. That those judgments have no real meaning because there is only what is. How does this relate to the central question of surviving the labyrinth of suffering? Alaska spent her life after her mom's death thinking about the best and worst times in her life constantly. 
This parable is directly related to when Alaska suggested that they play the best day worst day game when out camping with her friends. There she shares the worst day of her life that has overshadowed everything she did thereafter. Everything that comes together falls apart. We are all going, it is inevitable. Suffering will only cease when we stopped wishing things would not fall apart. Alaska could not do this and so she did not survive. The problem is not life but how much emphasis we put on disappointment, pain, and laying blame while trying to hold ourselves together, creating a sense of hopelessness. Miles realizes that the only way to survive the labyrinth of suffering is to forgive. When Alaska's mother died, she blamed and could not forgive herself for something that was out of her control, and this is what caused her to self-destruct. Miles also blamed himself for the death of Alaska as he felt he should have stopped her from getting in her car drunk. If only he had stopped her. This thought haunted him, but then he realized. She forgave us, and that we had to forgive to survive in the labyrinth. There were so many of us who would have to live with things done and things left undone that day, things that did not go right, things that seemed okay at the time because we could not see the future. If only we could see the endless string of consequences that result from our smallest actions, but we can't know better until knowing better is useless. What is the best way to go about being a person? How do we survive, not escape the labyrinth of suffering? According to Miles, it is to forgive. Stop beating yourself up for elements of your life that are outside of your control, such as death. Forgive yourself and others for the unfortunate things that happen in life and accept what is. Energy once created is never destroyed. And if Alaska took her own life, that is the hope I wish I could have given her to understand that anything in life is survivable because we are as indestructible as we believe ourselves to be.